reminded us about uh, music and the arts, I have a message for all of us from the Getting High Choir, and that is that it welcomes new singers, especially for the spring season that's coming uh, beginning the week of February 13th. So the choir, uh, you have your choice of joining it on a Monday night, a Tuesday night, or a Thursday night, and I believe Siobhan also has a noon hour time. You can find it at www.gettinghighercoir.ca. So, let me now turn to uh, Reverend Michelle Slater. Michelle has been a spiritual leader with the United Church of Canada for 18 years. She's constantly looking for ways to work with others for gender and climate justice, reconciliation with indigenous peoples, and advocacy for LGBTQ <coughs> people. So please welcome Michelle. Thanks very much. It's a great honor to represent all the Christians in the world. <laughs> sisters and brothers in Christ would be horrified that I actually am. <laughs> <laughs> well, here you are, here we are. Uh, so let me just tell you what I can about my particular um, tradition, which is the United Church of Canada, a uh, Protestant uh, denomination in Canada. Uh, and I would say that I have, uh, I think, a teaching and then a practice that flows out of it. I think that the teaching from the Christian tradition that would most help humanity heal and flourish, uh, hopefully unsurprisingly, would be found in the story of Jesus of Nazareth, for me. And that is the radically different countercultural way of understanding what power and strength uh, really are. In the Christian story, God uh, becomes one with humanity, uh, comes to be one of us, to be with us, uh, in a human being, in Jesus of Nazareth. And not in a king, and not in a military general, not in a superhero from another planet or another dimension, not in any of the ways that the ancient world, or the modern world for that matter, would want, uh, would expect or look for. We can see in our most recent election the yearning for someone strong to protect people, right, from what they perceive to be their enemies. Someone who will use military force and bombs and build walls to show strength and ensure safety and security. And that's not how God comes in the story of Jesus. God is born as a baby, the most vulnerable and dependent creature on earth. God requires other human beings to care for God's very self. God comes in the most weak, tender, and vulnerable way possible. In a baby born to poor peasants, born in an occupied land. God is quickly forced to flee state-sponsored violence and live as a refugee in Egypt. And when Jesus grows, his life exemplifies a weakness and dependence on others. He's an itinerant a teacher and healer. Uh, he brings nothing with him and he is dependent on, literally, the kindness of strangers to welcome him and provide him and his followers hospitality. Mostly women, but that's a whole other topic. <laughs> In his living, he welcomes the most poor and marginalized. He welcomes children when adults want to shun them. He touches lepers who are forced to live outside of human community uh, and brings healing. He walks alongside uh, those who are shamed because of their sexual history. Um, he sits at table with people who are different from him, sinners, and is judged for that. And eventually, he is actually put to death uh, in the most shameful, public, humiliating, uh, and painful way, uh, put to death in an act of state-sponsored terror, um, execution on a cross. And our story says that that is not the end, that in that dying, God somehow mysteriously absorbs that violence and evil and hatred and fear and power and somehow subverts it and turns it inside out and absorbs it and brings life 
unexpected and paradoxical out of death. That is directly counter to what we are taught by our culture, by the dominant narrative of our society. We are taught to fear weakness and vulnerability. We're taught to laugh at and shame people who are losers and tweet against them late at night. <laughs> we are taught to think that the worst thing is to be dependent on others and that our lives are no longer worth living once we're no longer healthy and mobile and independent. And we're taught to be afraid of anyone or anything who is different from us, uh, whether it's their religion, their country of origin, uh, their sexual orientation or their gender identity or the ways they might express it. Whether they are poor, addicted, or mentally ill, we are taught to be afraid of them because frightened people make better consumers and are more easily swayed in the ballot box. But fear damages us on the inside, it damages the world, it tempts us to turn away from the world and turn in on ourselves, and I think it also turns us away from our deepest selves, right? It's only when we can live in that discomforting um, vulnerability and fear and anxiety and interrogate it and deconstruct it, as Soshin um, talked about, that we find healing for ourselves and then for the world. So the story of Jesus, to me, uh, I think the most powerful teaching for healing is the, the truth that true power and strength comes from openness and vulnerability, comes from weakness and self-giving love, not from shows of force or might or strength. I think that um, the Christian church has done a terrible job living that out uh, over 2,000 years. Um, that the church owes apologies many times to our Jewish brothers and sisters in the faith. That in particular in the United Church of Canada, we owe a huge apology to our indigenous peoples, and I apologize to you, my brother Alex, on behalf of the United Church of Canada for our part in the residential schools. Um, and one might say that the church is uh, being judged, uh, might we, for not living out the truth of this story and for the ways that we have embraced uh, power and, and being dominant in the culture, and whenever we have, boy, we have used it so badly. We have allowed ourselves to be used and complicit in, in legitimizing imperialism and colonialism, anti-Semitism and the Holocaust. We have so much to repent for. Uh, and there is so much to be hopeful for, I think, uh, because at least in my uh, teaching, it is only the power of love and weakness and vulnerability that healing and transformation can truly come. And I guess then the practice that would flow out of that would be the kind of radical hospitality that Jesus embodied. And it's radical hospitality because it doesn't just say, here, come and be in my space and be like me, or be different, but be over there. Radical hospitality embodied by Jesus is the willingness for me to be changed by my encounter with the other. So it's not just come and sit at my table and eat my food, or even sit at my table and bring your food, but change me. Change me because I will be for the better. I will be healed and transformed by this radical encounter with you, who seems other, but yet we will discover together around the table that we are truly one. <laughs>